What's going on guys, Dan from SSG bringing you an Edison tournament analysis here. We have Peak of the Beak 2 that was just ran, we have 85 players, and of course we are on formatlibrary.com. It's a really great resource for anything Edison format, but also any retro format. They do a lot of great work here, giving us the analysis, the top deck list, a lot of um, awesome things to check out, formatlibrary.com, but we're going to get into a tournament analysis here, go over the top decks, but first I want to look at some of the most played cards and the deck representation here. So deck representation we have a lot of black wings of course 16 out of the 85 players elected to play black wings and then 14 more value turbo variations so a lot of black wings here that's something you can try and take um sort of react to right try to take advantage of all these black wing players try and find some side deck cards that can help you out there and also tune your main decks to fight against those we have seven zombies seven frog monarchs five light sworn and then we get into some other decks here which uh you know four dragon turbo and we move down to x sabers and a bunch of rogue strategies and tier two decks i would mostly call them but um some interesting top played cards we have um of course caius always one of the most played cards in the format but what i really like to look that use this as a resource is see what people are using are using as their answers we have you know dimensional prison and bottomless trap hole just being staples in the format but like you know there are a lot of good cards that can kind of counteract these like something like lila um can beat out deep prison so maybe you want to add some more lilas into your light sworn or twilight based decks things like that just kind of look at um a lot of Sirocco, so a lot of people playing Black Wings, of course, but also in the side deck. Uh, but these are main deck counts, so 83, uh, a lot of, lot of Black Wings. So um, the rest of it looks pretty staple. And for side deck cards, we have DD Crow, of course, Cyber Dragon, the SSG staple. We want to run all those. Pulling the Rug, really strong card. I've just liking this card quite a bit, and it's just really, really strong against Caius, of course, but it also just, like, nabs other things like random people playing gadgets, of course, people playing uh, Debris Dragon, things like that. A lot of Light Mirror trying to counteract those Light Sworn decks. I don't blame them. It's really strong. Um, Dust Tornado, staple Cyborg card, and we have Royal Oppression. I'm kind of um, surprised to see Fossil Dina on this list. I'm not a huge fan of this one right now in the format, um, but I think it does have its place against like Frog Monarchs, so interesting there. Um, and yeah, so let's get into some of these deck lists here. We have the top 12 deck lists, so we're going to get right into it. So in 10th place, we have a Blackwing deck here, and looks pretty standard to me um a lot of people still rocking with the royal oppressions here i'm sort of on the fence about this i have like one in my um black wing list but i kind of keep going back and forth um i think it's like not great against some of the decks in the format but um it's just obviously a very powerful card against um a few decks you know but like even like against in the black wing mirror right like you have value that can get around oppression you have the um you know, you really only have Blizzard that you're negating. Um, Bora coming down is not really that relevant in the mirror. So um, you're really just hitting Dark Harm and Blizzard. And, like, that's not really um, an effective strategy against um, the Blackwing mirror. So, um, and one thing uh, that's important to note is that a lot of times Sirocco is the comeback card in the mirror match because you're going to be able to put this card on the board and then, like, sort of take all the opponent's attacks and make a big Sirocco attack over your opponent's armed wing or something like that. And that's something you can normal summon. So, um, oppression, not really that great in the mirror. A lot of people still sticking with two, kind of, like, counteracting the plant decks and things like that. Um, I like the two copies of... Um, Nobleman Extermination. I think this one is kind of falling out of favor a little bit as well, but we're going to see how many people are running it here. I think it's decent at in the mirror at just getting rid of Icarus Attack. That's really the main line of interaction this deck could have, and um, I, I like it there quite a bit. Um, I also like it against like War Chariot and things like that, but not too many Gladiators running around. I could see cutting this card down to one. I could see not running it at all, but um, interesting this player elected to play two here in the main board. Very streamlined. Just want to get their combos and um, aggression off by removing those back Macros, so pretty standard list here and we go on to frog monarch here but this is not a frog monarch deck this looks kind of nuts and i love decks like this sort of like a kuraz frog monarch um toolbox deck sort of like a kuraz deck kind of comboing with these field spells down here um we have three gear town fusion gate which is just an awesome awesome tech um, along with the Black Garden, which can slow down the game, and also combo by reborning uh, Karaz out of the graveyard. Um, really awesome here. We have the two, the Skyscraper 1 and Skyscraper 2. Really powerful. Um, this is just awesome. I love these type of decks where you can just sort of toolbox your way and 
uh, get to where you're going and whatever you need to do you have an answer for it and you know, of course three terraforming searching so many different targets you know let's count how many targets we have here we have um, one two three with the gear town four for the fusion gate five with black garden that's just a lot of um custom customizable ability in your deck you can sort of play whatever field spells you want and um of course you see two more on the side clear world and future visions awesome awesome deck here really creative innovative you have um engineer ancient gear engineer i'm a big fan of this card as you guys seen on my channel i like it quite a bit coming off of the gear town really strong just gives you more flexibility not just always going for the galatron dragon which of course we're playing here um but other than that we're like a frog monitor deck that can do some sweet stuff you know we just have a normal frog engine only two swaps because probably to conserve room but you have three substitutes two treeborns um and then two dupes for the duplock combo here i love the uh bubble man gives you access to um uh searchable water monster off of stratos which is good um and uh it, it can sort of like set up for duplock as well just by dropping this card into play and then normal summoning substitute really awesome um combo there um, this deck just does a lot of cool things. The random one, Jinx, Junk Synchron's weird. I love this card in Frog Monarchs, but it's just kind of thrown in here, so it seems. And we're playing, what, 48 cards with a 1 uh, Treacherous, so interesting. The guy just kind of threw a pile in here. Ragnarok is a an excellent duelist. He's topped a lot of these events, and he definitely plays around with the Frog Monarch engine, so I like this quite a bit. I'm definitely going to probably profile something similar to this on the channel in the future. Um, this uh, really awesome awesome deck, just really creative, and um, props to Frognark for getting 10th with this deck. Um, really powerful. Kuraz is just an awesome card. Draw cards with Gear Town, pop, and start going off like that. Miracle Fusion, very powerful card. Kind of just threw a bunch of strong cards in the deck. A lot of uh, flexibility with Prisma, and um, Captain Gold, just awesome deck. I like it quite a bit, and uh, yeah, let's go on to the next one. Okay, we have the Frog OTK deck that was popularized by Frog Slicer, um, and it just looks solid. You know, I don't really know how what the like how like customizable this deck is. I think uh, the magical mounts probably keep things really consistent. I think that's pretty interesting. Only two Exodius. Um, maybe that's all you need for the loop. That's why it's only two. But I usually see three here. Um, other than that, looks like they're going to draw a bunch of cards with Poison, uh, poison Draw Frog. Kind of loop their whole deck and uh, find some way to win with Synchro Monsters by using Fistborg Blaster as like an infinite tuner. And um, pretty interesting, so not bad. I think Symbol of Heritage is one of the more busted cards in like Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Really strong card that can just uh, kind of go off with Substitute. But, um, sideboard Planets of Frog Monarchs, I like that quite a bit. I think um, a lot of decks just try to like you know jam all 15 of their sideboard slots into you to try and like stop your combos and stuff like that frog monarchs you can come in and kind of just like slowly kill them with cards like soul exchange caius and mobius a lot of people are going to be running, rocking their back rows to get rid of these combos you have going on but pretty interesting here uh treeborns on the side pretty interesting you don't want it in the main because you don't need it <laughs> i like that quite a bit i think it's pretty interesting to have a card like treeborn in the side deck but um pretty strong here um extra deck triple armory arm i've seen people make three of these in one turn with like a dupe lock and stardust and stuff it, just nuts right armory arm's so sick i love seeing multiples in an extra deck like this so pretty awesome and we're gonna go on to the next deck all right in ninth place x saber is really excited to see x saber player in top what nine you know sort of top eight you know almost top eight but you know like one of the top decks here and um x saber is like pretty solid i mean i think embers blade is just one of the best recruiters in the format it just gets a lot of uh interesting effects out of the deck and um i, I like the um rescue cat you know it's just a really strong card and two copies of giant rat to go search it i like giant rat and all my x saber builds i generally like to run it we have um, two hamsters, two Rikos. Hamsters, pretty, pretty good. Uh, I can set up Faltro plays by going and grabbing our Air Bellum here. Uh, make some um, really nasty plays and just, you know, four monsters out of nowhere, but also just being able to grab Ryko as sort of a controlling piece. Really strong. Um, uh, Gronom Z Call is just a really powerful card here. I like the two trap stuns. I think you gotta cut you gotta cut a card here, and you know, you wanna make it a little more consistent in a deck like this. You gotta get it down to 40, but... Um, I like the two trap stuns quite a bit. Um, uh, the Book of Moon, I always like Book of Moon X Sabers. Maybe potentially get a Falhom Knight hit um, and reborn something out of the graveyard. That's pretty good. Deck looks pretty solid. Um, you got the SSG staple over here, Cyber Dragon DD Crow on the side. Um, Thunder Kings, I like quite a bit. Can kind of slow the game down and try to crew some uh, X Sabers in your hand to start um, going off when you have all the cards available to you. 
And um, yeah, sideboard looks really streamlined. I like it quite a bit. Extra deck, you get access to uh, Hunley. Very strong. Gotham's, of course, very powerful card. And um, yeah, I like this deck quite a bit. I'm glad to see it doing at least remotely well. Getting ninth place is a pretty good finish. So uh, awesome deck here. We'll move along. We have a Lightsworn deck now. Lightsworns. We have a um, pretty standard Lightsworn list here. Uh, only one Beckoning Light, no Christias or anything like that in this list, but all three copies of Wolf, two copies of Celestia, I like quite a bit. I think that's sort of like the staple standard now. A lot of people are running that ratio. Um, Celestia is really strong. I like the card. Uh, it's very, very powerful. And um, two Hamsters. I personally like three because I want to have most uh, as many starters in my deck as possible. But um, two Hamsters is really strong. I think um, Raiko just being your more main form of interaction is very good. And uh, only one Book of Moon because uh, two Hamsters is, you know, it's good with the one book. But I like to, you know, up the Hamster and book count a little bit. I like that this player is running two copies of Jane. Jane is just excellent. I mean, this card just beats established Blackwing boards. Something like, you know... Some of these, like, unwinnable, it seems unwinnable situations where they're, like, open Shura plus um, Black Rowan. I think a card like Jane can kind of interact with that as long as they don't have a Kloop. And Jane can come down and just, like, threaten those, like, normal summon boards. Make them have to do something else um, and uh, answer the 1800 stick while also mailing uh, your deck and getting your plan game plan going. Only one Lila. Pretty interesting, as we noticed a lot of deep prisons in the metagame right now. As you saw, it's the second most played card, or third, second or third most placed card, and um, only one Lila in this list, so interesting. I definitely want to get more Lilas into the deck, knowing that there are a bunch of deep prisons running around. But, um, yeah, overall, just Lightsworns, you know, Lightsworns top deck. It gets in there, um, fifth place, so in top eight now. And, uh, yeah, pretty good. And another Blackwing deck here, um, cutting down to one copy of Royal Oppression. This is sort of the thing I was talking about earlier and kind of been struggling with that aspect. How many oppressions do I really want now in Edison format? And um, one in the main, one in the side down here. And um, this list just looks very streamlined, just very, very strong. Um, only uh, one value, so not no graphers, anything like that. More of a traditional black green deck from back in the day, but of course still playing the three upstarts to be as consistent as possible. 13 traps, um, pretty good. I like the one copy of um, Seven Tools of the Bandit, pretty interesting. I think if you're going to want to interact with people, um, you definitely want to do it on the back row side of things in this deck because you really want to push your monster game plan forward and being able to resolve your, you know, Bora pushes or your Blizzard comeback plays or your Dark Arm Dragon coming in. You want um, something like this or maybe like a Trap Stun or something like that in this deck just to sort of... Um, you know, interact and be able to just go off and actually kill your opponent or actually do the thing that you want to do. Um, and the 1-7 tool is just kind of sweet. And I noticed they have a second copy here in the sideboard as well. Really strong. Um, I think in the, you know, in the mirror you want, like, this to just stop an Icarus attack. I think that can be huge. Um, it's really powerful. So, um, interesting here. But a lot of interaction, you know, we have Bottomless Deep Prison, Triple Icarus, only one Oppression. This looks solid to me. Looks very consistent. And uh, yeah, it's Black Wings and it's good. So, oh, and two fossils down here. Interesting fossils. I think that's basically just for Frog Monarchs. Um, like I mentioned, not my favorite card to be running right now, but hey, it worked out for them. And uh, let's keep going. Now we have Diva Heroes. So, this looks like more of a Gemini beat style of uh, hero deck. Um, but we do have Diva and only one Spine Gilman. A lot of these decks are playing two Spine Gilman, and I understand why. I think that being able to have the normal summon of like Cataster um, or Android is very powerful. But um, Spine Gilman is a brick at the end of the day. So this player just going to one Spine Gilman um, with the three Divas. Um, but I think you definitely, when you do that, you definitely need to have these Maliciouses in here to combo with the like Diva Diva play. Um, because you're not just going to rely on the Spine Gilman being in the deck to facilitate your waters for the Miracle Fusion. I like the one Cyber Dragon. I think that's pretty interesting. I think it gives you some options here. Um, Ocean's really good. I like Ocean quite a bit as a one of. Stratos, of course. Plague is interesting to me. This one doesn't make too much sense, but this player got fifth, you know, top eight. Duelist, maybe Plague was really good. I think the idea when I'm looking at the list is to, with Plague Spreader, is to give you another discard outlet for the two copies of Wing Blast. 
Um, I'm not sure if that's like good enough to facilitate the um, plague spreader. There's probably some better ways to enable wing blast. But I think uh, I get the idea, you know. Um, but to me, it, this looks a little like greedy or a little like far fetched. But I understand the logic. Plague spreader is a very powerful card, and um, so so I get it. But um, mostly, you're just gonna want to be discarding your malicious off of Stratos for wing blast, and that's pretty much it. Um, but I like it. It's kind of like a hybrid version here, not too controlling, not too combo. And uh, I, ha I like having access to Wing Blast in decks like this, or in decks in general. So um, I like Dark Bribe as well as the one of. I've always liked the card as a one of in the main deck. Other than that, uh, pretty good. 12 traps. I like it quite a bit. Good controlling Miracle Fusion deck that can also pop off when necessary. And uh, Cyber Dragon, pretty sweet addition to the main board. Another hero beat, and here's this double spine Gilman version here. Um, so three diva, two spine Gilman. Um, like I said, I, I kind of like both ideas. Um, and you see that this list doesn't have malicious because the two divas is kind of useless in this list. Um, so you do need the second spine Gilman to kind of combo there, which you know it's it's good and bad. There's bricks you're gonna draw spine Gilman sometimes, but at least it's a water monster, you know. But um, other than that, we have three Elias two of the oceans which is interesting i don't like this card that much but um at two at least um but you know it's a hero it's gonna potentially do some things for you um you're playing a lot of traps to protect it 16 trap cards in this list so pretty good um stratus of course and two honest i'm not a huge fan of double honest in these decks that only run alias as their light monsters um i just like having crusader or thunder king or something uh, Cyber Dragon, something like that, but, um, interesting here, um, two e-calls to sort of support the Honest, making sure that the, you have a monster at all times, um, and, uh, interesting, I like three deep prisons in the deck when you're running the two oceans, so at least you have, like, some chance of protecting it, also three wing blasts with no, like, with no, like, really good discard outlet at all, that's really interesting to me. I think you're just really banking on the ocean value and being able to, um, you know, go down a card to do that and then resolve your ocean. Seems decent. I mean, I don't mind that. It's just never guaranteed when you have that kind of a setup. So, like, if you go and discard, like, a real card, like, um, say, a bottomless or something for the Swing Blast, you're then going to... Uh, what happens if they have, like, a Smashing Ground after? Like, they go for their play... Um, they have a smashing round to just pop your ocean, then you're kind of just down a card straight up. Something like that, but, um, yeah, you also have some value with, um, two Hero Blast, adding back from Graveyard as a plus one to discard for the Wing Blast, so I would like to see, like, triple Hero Blast with triple Wing Blast if you're gonna do something like that, um, which I think is, like, pretty interesting, but a lot of times, um, I would like to just see one to two Wing Blast in these kind of Hero decks, but overall, it's gonna be an excellent card. I think it's really powerful, and going down a card, um... I think is not as bad as people think, but um, having three is, I think, a little much in this kind of a list. Um, but it worked out here, um, fifth place for this duelist. And um, Cyborg, triple pulling the rug. A lot of people running three pulling the rug. Cyber Dragons on the side. No DD Crows. Pretty interesting. Another player playing Fossil here. Um, Super Poly, interesting take there. I like Super Poly quite a bit. And uh, we'll move on to the next list. And in third place, we have a Blackwing deck here. Uh, again, running the two copies of Nobleman. Pretty interesting. Um, I think this list looks pretty similar to one of the other ones. It might be the exact same. I'm not sure. But um, Greffers, we have Aggression here. Very streamlined. We have 10 trap cards. Uh, bottomless making it in this time. A lot of people just run this, tra this trap line up here without the two bottomless. That's like the standard Blackwing trap lineup. This player adding bottomless in. Um, bottomless is good. I think it's good in the mirror match. Sort of um, not allowing players to come back. I think bottomless is exp especially strong against these normal summons of Shura and uh, Bora because, um, and of course like Mi um, Sirocco on the mirror, but mainly Bora and Shura because um, being able to banish those and not allow like Blizzard to come down and make a huge comeback play is very strong. I think Bottomless is really good in the mirror match here. Um, I love the three deck devies. Um, interesting third nobleman here. That I mean, I don't know what matchups are you really bringing this in? Are you just bringing it in against like decks like Glads and decks that just have a million back row? Like maybe, right? But I mean, you have a lot of back rows yourself in this deck. A lot of times you're going to be a little more controlling. 
you can have you know sometimes you'll draw weird hands with like greffer and like not much else going on but um yeah interesting i uh, i think that's just a lot of commitment to normal mana extermination but um anything else two cyber dragons two dd crows we have uh two compulse i like compulse quite a bit when you're just going for big pushes compulse also just trades effectively with like the the cards that this deck can have a hard time dealing with cards like um absolute zero is the one that's like hey i just get rid of this right away i don't have to waste a, like attack and a clue on it to you know go down a card essentially against the miracle fusion trading two cards for one this card just like kind of blows that away and um just makes it gives you an easy access answer to um those type of like hard to deal with cards that you know black wings don't really have too much trouble dealing with cards in general because you have like icarus and stuff but um compulse just you know makes it easy makes your life a little bit easier and i like it quite a bit Extra deck, pretty standard down here. Um, congratulations for third place. And on to another third place, so top four, I guess this is. We have uh, Dragon Turbo, and this deck is just, man, it's just the deck if you want to be D-Gen mode, just drawing your whole deck, doing the thing, this is it. Um, I love Instant Fusion in this deck. Uh, being Having access to Bryanac is just so, so powerful. Um, I actually run two in my current list. I think the card's very, very powerful. Um, Gores and Trag, very good. I like having both of these. Some players cut one of them. Um, a lot of players ending up on Trag and no Gores, or Gores and no Trag, but I like both of them here. You want to have access to one of these. On the turn where you activate and resolve your Super Ruju, you do want to have a defensive card just in case your opponent tries to kill you because that is kind of the counterplay to this deck, being able to... Um, your opponents try and put you on the clock before you can actually like fully commit to a kill um but this deck looks pretty solid um two avarice i'm not sure how i feel about two avarice i think one is probably fine um this card could probably brick in the early game but um i don't mind it it's really good um i love having the one copy of draco in the main board here with two in the side but i like having it at one because like it is like something an ending thing you can just end on with like you know you could have like random sort of like normal summon and then you could have like um the red md bring it back like it's just a good ending board that kind of slows your opponent down and uh this card is just one of the best normal summons in the format so i like this card quite a bit and um just having it as a one-up just gives you access to that um clear vice dragon i'm a big fan of this card um just an awesome card um pretty standard otherwise I, I like this deck it looks really strong looks consistent i love card destruction i think the card's really powerful and underplayed in the format um yeah um oppressions in the side treacherous in the side i'm i'm kind of curious what you bring treacherous in against or maybe you just bring it in going second i like playing this card like i like setting this card when your opponent has a board so you can just like set it and kind of get them but um yeah i guess you could probably bring it in against like the value versions of black wings um musician king is the man musician king's an awesome card um can help you make some uh level sixes and uh, also tempest position is really relevant you can discard for damage and then like super rejuve and draw a bunch of cards so magician king is the man for the deck third place congratulations and we go to second place duelist we have another black wing list this one um pointing out we have a more value turbo kind of list with no um black wing monsters really in the main we just have three soroko gale and three value which I like quite a bit. I think these decks are really strong. I think they give you more po powerful cards. Um, things you get to play like Chaos Sorcerer. Really strong card. Card Trooper. Very powerful. Normal Summon. You get to play more trap cards in these lists generally. You have Charge of Light Brigade. Ryko. Very strong interactive piece. Two copies of Kaius. You have good Ry Kai like you're a good Ryko Kaius deck while also having the upsides of like the early Dark Refer draws, which I think is just very powerful. I think I like these type of decks really a lot. Um, I think they sort of fall a little bit wayside when compared to the um, traditional Blackwing Greffer list because those lists are very linear, very consistent, and very powerful. But I think this deck abuses Royal Oppression a little bit better. I think you're just a better control deck in general, but also can have these fast clocks with Dark Refer getting the uh, value in Soroko in the graveyard very quickly. Armageddon Knight, pretty good. Um, I like that this can kind of unbrick your hands a little bit if you have, like, um, some number of, like, value and not the other one. You know, you can set your value and then just go and dump the uh, Soroko. 
um, and vice versa. So um, pretty interesting here. Um, I think, yeah, just solid, just solid here. Um, I usually only run one Armageddon now that I'm thinking about it, but um, two looks fine. I think two is fine here. Um, Rota, very strong card. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. You still have the three deck devy, still three pulling the rugs. So there's a lot of people are playing. Two compulse. Compulse has just been awesome. Um, again, it's just really good. Gets rid of the problem cards. Three DD Crows here. Um, I usually like Cyber Dragon in these type of decks, but no Cyber Dragon here. Um, extra deck looks pretty standard. And we will go on to the number one deck. And it is Black Wings, of course. So, Black Wings with 14 trap cards. So, more traditional Black Wing deck. Um, no value turbo um, stuff. Um, it looks like this player just elected to not play Upstart and in exchange played more trap cards. Having the um, Compulse in the main deck is very interesting. I like it quite a bit. Another copy of Book of Moon, more than people are running. Most people are running one, something like that. This player opted to run two. Um, really standard monster lineup here. Three of all the good Black Wings, of course, one Gale. And um, one value only with Dark Arm. So basically all that you need, nothing else. Um, all the consistent spell cards. And uh, a lot of good interactive pieces here in the traps. And I like two Dust Tornado as well. I think the card's very solid. And uh, it just does quite a lot. Um, it can, you know, it's very chainable to a card like Icarus when your opponent tries to resolve that. I think having chainable traps is really good. Um, I saw one player playing Yacht Legacy of Yada Garatsu. Um... That's a card I could, uh, uh, I would sometimes elect to see in these more standard Blackwing decks. I could see like one Yada, one Dust Tornado, just as chainable trap cards. Um, same with Compulse, just it's chainable. You know, if you're going to lose it, you might as well use it in some way. Um, very good here. Um, I like this list quite a bit. I think the player did very well, as it's very balanced. I like two Prohibitions, pretty interesting here. Um, I think this card is very flexible. It just lets you play around the things you need to play around. Um, and a uh, really good streamlined cyborg. I love these cyborgs with like two ofs a lot. You know, two Cyber Dragon, two Fossil, two um, Snowmen, two um, Thunder King here. Um, a lot of two ofs. Skill Drain. I love Skill Drain in these like Blackwing decks without Greffer. I think these decks are just really strong with Skill Drain. Um, Skill Drain, Icarus Attack, Black Roman is just like insane. Just a really powerful uh, way to win a duel. But uh, yeah. I like the deck quite a bit. Congratulations. I believe this is a Hydro Pump. I believe he's been crushing with Black Wings for a while now. So uh, congrats to him on taking down another tournament. And um, that is the deck. That is the tournament. And let me know what you guys thought. Um, I think this was a pretty awesome event. Um, a lot of players entering the event. And a lot of interesting decks. Especially like the um, Ragnark um, combo deck that we see down here. But... That is about it, guys. Let me know what you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the tournament. Let me know how you what you thought about this video format. Let me know what your favorite deck was. Mine is definitely the uh, Frog Monarch combo deck that we saw with the Gear Towns and stuff. I love those type of decks. But other than that, drop a like, maybe subscribe, and uh, that's about it. Without further ado, this is Dan V from SSG signing out.